you know, it's your here. Um, experiencing again another uh, medical, really, um, I've been gaining for a while. But, you know, I always try to, when I'm doing videos, sit in a certain way. And then it just gets to the point where I can't. So this just didn't happen all in a day or two. But I'm now in this position again. So my apologies for that. And uh, on we go, right? So just don't want to shock anybody there. So, yeah, I wanted to do a video um, comment response to comment that was left on the video I did, BPD relationships, why they never work which I'll probably try to link under here because I think sometimes people find, you know, my latest video and might not have seen a lot of others. And so when I'm referring to a video, who knows if you've seen it or not, right? So it might be helpful. So the commenter says, how are they, meaning people with BPD, how are they seeking love from one person to the next? That's a great question because of course they're not, right? Yes, people with BPD, and especially untreated, they think they're seeking love from the next person. But the truth is, uh, it's not about love. They don't know how to attach. They don't really know how to love in any mature, healthy, adult, mutual, consistent, reciprocal way. And so uh, they don't really attach you and they can't take in, they can't take in your love, as I've talked a lot about and in a few maybe i'll put a couple of those videos under here as well so um just to help people out right there's no problem with the comments so how are they seeking love from one person to the next they're not they're in um unconscious repetition compulsion cycles many who don't know how to be alone some people bp can be alone but they are seeking without knowing it that next, you know, sort of like, quote, hopefully, you know, good object, that, that object of the representation, the next person, a uh, good parent never had potentially, right? And then what happens when they devalue you, when they split you to black, when the relationship ends or they ghost or discard you, then what happens is you're kind of out of sight, out of mind, but they project onto you that, in internalized interjected bad object that happens you know really young really early in people who want to be diagnosed with BPD's lives so they're really not going um seeking love from one person to the to the next or to you know one person to the other to the other but they may think it's that because they don't consciously really understand what it what are they doing right and then again, they leave everybody in their wake thinking that they'll say, if they say anything, and they don't just disappear, they'll say it was your fault. And they actually really believe that. So that again is, you know, because of what they're projecting out onto a partner that is a repetition compulsion and it's done unconsciously, what they experience, it's actually, they're re-experiencing something inside they don't know what it is that they experienced when they were young that was really painful and an adverse experience. And so that's what they re-experience with partners. And then they think, well, you are the cause of it, which partners aren't. And so then they go on to the next and they think it's about love, but it's all about what they need. And it's all about their eternal unconscious search for reparation, for finding self, which can only take place predominantly even more than in DBT therapy in psychodynamic modalities of treatment for people with BPD. Commenter continues, sounds like an excuse, uh, sounds like excuses for empty individuals that are promiscuous. Well, I mean, it may sound, hey, Tobe, it may sound like an excuse, but they really don't know what's going on for them, which doesn't excuse them at all, right? And um, when you say they're, they are empty, they are empty individuals because they don't have a container of self. They don't know themselves at all. Whoops, I just lost my place. What else is new? Um, they don't know themselves at all. So they are kind of empty vessels in that regard. And, uh, and you're saying uh, an excuse for being uh, empty individuals that are promiscuous. They're not all promiscuous. 
So not all women with BPD are promiscuous. Not all men with BPD would be considered promiscuous. If we can say that about men, I'm not sure. But many are, but they aren't all. So they don't all leave to, like they don't all monkey branch. They don't all cheat. But when they move on to that next person, whether you left them or often in the ghosting and discarding that they will do, they just go to the next person as if that person's going to be the one that it works with because they're not aware that the problem is inside of them. And sorry for the puppy noises in his crate there. And the commenter says, my BPDX girlfriend broke up with me via text. Um, I'm not sure what that word is. It looks like a typo, but I guess texted or sent to work. And I blocked her on everything. What a disgusting thing to do. It is. It is. It's a very black and white, painful. Um, yeah, it, like out of bounds thing that they do, to put it mildly. And you said, um, breaking up with me because I like to live uh, life. Shake my head. Well, yeah, and you know, and you have every right to want and to like to live your life. But what people with BPD can't stand about that, and then the rejection sensitivity kicks in and their fear of abandonment, uh, or, or they, yeah, basically that plus what they're projecting unconsciously. The thing is that they need you to be there for them. They need you to mirror who they are. They're seeking identity through you. So in that way, this is a little bit of what's going on for them deep inside an unconscious level that they're not really aware of. So um, anyway, there's no excuse for it, but I hope that kind of helps somebody out to realize that they are, I can't, okay, just can't see, that people with BPD are essentially empty, you know, if they're untreated, they don't know a self. Unstable sense of self is one way to put it, but it's a real lack of identity. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they need. They don't know what's driving their unconscious repetition compulsion cycles of how they continue to relate to anybody that tries to get close or is in relationship with them or to them. Uh, like, like they'll be acting out and re-experiencing unconsciously what they experience with a wounding parent at some point. So in the beginning, it's all the idealization, the mirroring, and people with BPD are codependents as well. They're codependent people pleasing. And of course, what you find out after too is that when they just move on and they're not really looking for, they think they're looking for love, but it's not really what's happening. And, um, and they don't take in your love. So, so many people like this commenter, when they just go to the next person looking for love, you're like, what was wrong with my love? Like, I really love this person. I've had lots of clients recently even describing to me how well they treated the person with BPD, their partner, um, husband or wife even. And, and that the person with BPD at a certain time, you know, just all of a sudden, if not before and in cycles, gets into those devaluation splits and they, they don't really take in all that you're giving them. They don't feel worthy of it, uh, unbeknownst to them. And so it's like it never happened. And this is so painful and frustrating for people who have been, you know, suffered a BPD relationship breakup, no matter which way that breakup comes. But it sounds like this commenter is really taking care of themselves because, you know, they blocked this person on everything. And that's a really key, important thing to do. But the other thing is to make sure that you maintain that no contact, right? But some people are really going to struggle in that process. Some people are more attuned and able to really hold on to that. And don't forget, I'm out here to work with people, anybody that, you know, you'd like to work on this or you're, you're no contact, but you don't know if you can hold the no contact. You might be getting hoovered, etc. If I resonate with you, I'm out here to work with you. So um, just remember, they're not really looking for love. And as this commenter nailed it in part, um, they are, it's an excuse, but they are rather empty. They don't have a self. They don't have a sense of identity. They get that from you as a partner. And then when you're not mirroring back what they need, and this is all unconscious that this happens for them, they get triggered to that split to devaluation. It could be the final split of ghosting and discarding. 
and then they're going to be on to the next person if they haven't, like, in fact, monkey branched. But the point is that it's not about love, and they're not all promiscuous, though it seems like it. And another thing I will say about those people with BPD, be they male or female, that are promiscuous, that's definitely often correlated with certain adverse childhood experience. And the other thing is that that is how a lot of people with BPD will feel somehow some semblance of connection to you when they don't otherwise feel really emotionally, they don't feel connected at all. And there can be lots of problems even within the physical relations, right? So, but the point is, no, they are empty inside, unfortunately and tragically, and that's very painful for them. Doesn't justify how they behave, doesn't justify how they just discard and ghost people. And the other reality about this is, as I've said in other videos, they really don't take in your love. They really don't know how to love and they don't attach to you. And then I just remind people that borderline personality disorder and the attachment issues that are usually part of this, you know, creation of BPD in people, like for the part that we understand that isn't the super science part we don't know yet. Um, what happens there is that people really uh, don't, they don't attach. And so they have disorganized attachment and disorganized attachment is not really to, you can't mix and match that with fear, you know, like fearful attachment or avoidant attachment. They really don't have an attachment style. And why would that be? Because they don't have a self from which to actually attach to anybody. They're not attached to self. So I hope that was helpful and take care.